Now, I think we can all admit that this planet that we live on is strange, creepy, weird, seen some crazy things throughout the year. Absolutely, right? We agree on that. So what better way to help us than finding some photos that support these theories, all right? Hopefully we have some of that today. This video here, man, is five of the strangest photo sightings that'll creep you out. We're gonna get to it. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button, join the family, and spam that like button, man. Let's get to it. In modern times, most of us carry around cameras every day and capture hours of footage of friends, family, and our experiences, which are shared online or kept as private memories. Yet, it can often seem like paranormal experiences get missed by the camera, leaving skeptics to question whether they actually happened. These people had photo or video evidence about what they experienced when they came face to face with cryptids or other paranormal phenomena. That hasn't stopped skeptics from questioning the photos, but has led others to believe there might be something to these supernatural sightings. Come on, we always gonna have skeptics. We know that by now, y'all. That shouldn't be no surprise to you. Number five. It's often said that we know more about outer space than our own oceans. True. That's a bit of a hyperbole, but it's true that the vast majority of our oceans remain unexplored. What we found lying deep beneath the surface of the sea are creatures that truly look like they're from another planet. These creatures have adapted to almost no light and extremely high pressures. Yep. Some live near hydrothermal vents and feed on nutrients that come from those vents. In some ways, they're really more like aliens than modern depictions of extraterrestrials. The eyes on this thing. This is why I'm a firm believer that aliens are in the ocean, man. Look at the eyes on this thing, man. And another thing, they always talking about the percentage, man. That has been making me mad as of late. I don't know what percentage of the ocean is explored anymore. It used to be 3% around that area, right? Give or take. But now I've heard upwards of five plus and, and more than that. They're all over the place with it. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all may be like, oh, well, that's only a couple percent. We're talking about the ocean. A couple of percent when you're dealing with the ocean is a lot. A lot. All right, back to freaky eyes over here. As they're designed to live in a world so different from our own. The vast array of life that has been discovered at the bottom of our oceans has given hope to fans of cryptozoology that some of the creatures of legend might be real. There are creatures that have been discovered that were previously believed to be mythical, like the giant squid, but others may be waiting to be discovered. Of those, the Nengen may be the most mysterious. The Nengen is a sea creature that is said to live in the waters around Antarctica. Because of its remote location, it's managed to go unnoticed for centuries, and it was only in 2003 that word of this creature started to surface. The story of the Ningen begins on the Japanese message board of 2Channel. There, a user posted a story told to them by a friend who was working on a whaling research vessel. He claimed they were humans in Antarctica. When the user asked if he meant the scientist on research bases, he said no. These humanoid figures live in the oceans. The first time that one was spotted was by the men on the research vessel. They at first thought that it was a submarine, but when they got closer, they realized it was a living creature. They were white or gray in color and looked like icebergs sitting just below the surface of the water. White or gray in color. Now, what is one of the names that they've been given to a, a group of aliens that they've come across? The grays, right? See how this stuff comes full circle? So just keep connecting the dots, man. Uh, trust me, <laughs> you're gonna get there. They apparently varied in size and shape, but most were comparable in size to whales. Some had four limbs, like humans, while others had tails instead of legs. Some were described as looking like two human torsos put together. The heads were usually devoid of facial features, apart from two eyes on the sides or underside of their heads, and a slit for a mouth. They were also described as having blubbery bodies, like a whale. The researchers simply called them Ningen, which translates to human. The story captured the imagination of internet users on the forum, 
then became more popular when featured in a Japanese paranormal magazine in 2007. This magazine article, entitled Google Earth Mystery, produced the first suspected photograph of a Ningen. The creature was captured on Google Earth, off the coast of Namibia, suggesting that it doesn't just stick to the oceans around Earth's most southern continent. It was clearly enormous and had one outstretched limb and the other pulled slightly back. The magazine suggested it may have been a Nengen or some other type of cryptid. It also reminded readers of a strange event that had taken place in 1958. The Japanese research vessel Soya was en route to an international project based in Antarctica. It was following the route of an American research vessel, so when it spotted something black floating in the water, it figured it was just a barrel dropped by an American ship. As they grew closer, they realized it wasn't a barrel at all. Nope. Just like the researchers that first spotted the Nengen, they realized it was a living creature. One person looked through a telescope at the creature, which only had its head poking above the water. He reportedly cried at Godzilla. Another sailor went onto the bridge to try to take a photo, but it had disappeared back under the sea by the time the sailor reached the bridge. According to the sailors, the head was between 70 and 80 centimeters in length and wow. round on top. It was covered in dark brown fur and had a face like a cow, with the exception of its pointed ears. Despite the fur, the sailor who looked through the telescope believed it was a lizard-like creature. Some believed that the sailors mistook whales or some other natural creature as a monster. Alternatively, it could have been a collective hallucination or a complete hoax. Some cryptozoologists argued that this might have been a kind of Ningen. The fact it had fur doesn't exactly match the descriptions of Ningen, but given how varied the reports of Ningen creatures are, it's possible there's more than one type. There have been a few images over the years. Most pictures of Ningen are obviously faked. Sometimes those are simply artistic representations of what the artist thinks a Ningen would look like, while others believe sure. that the faked pictures are put out to deliberately discredit actual sightings of the Ningen. According to the first post about these mysterious creatures, the Japanese authorities wanted to keep quiet about the existence of Ningen. Whaling remains a fairly controversial issue in Japan. While the country was briefly part of the International Whaling Commission, Japanese whaling vessels continued to work in the Southern Ocean, claiming to be doing so for research purposes. It was argued that reporting on the Ningen which could be seen as somewhere between humans and whales, could impact the Japanese public's perception of whaling. Other theories suggested that the Ningen produced a rare chemical that was either medicinal or highly poisonous and could be used in weapons. Even and there you have it. It's another reason they'll try to keep quiet. Right? See, man? <laughs> Continue to trust. You go ahead. You go ahead. They're either out for control or financial benefit, financial gain, and they don't care who it affects. They don't care about us, man. Why? Why would you keep certain things like that from us? So you can continue to make money off of whaling and stuff like that? Even without any interference, capturing photos or footage of an Ingen would be difficult. They're supposedly nocturnal, live in the hardest to reach environments, and if the 1958 creature was a Ningen, can apparently move very fast. However, there are a few videos that claim to have captured footage of the elusive creature. The most believable of these videos comes from Jamstack, or the Japanese Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology. The video, dated August 24th, 2010, shows what looks like a light-colored creature on the sea floor. Its eyes are a bright white, and it seems to have its mouth hanging open. Apparently, it had been moving, but when the camera came closer, it stopped. What we see of the creature lines up closely with the descriptions of the Nengen. And look how it blends in with the floor. You know what I was laughing at earlier? And when I was saying to myself, just imagine all the people that like to go deep sea diving. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. Explore what? That? And come across that? You, you have no shot at surviving or winning. No. As with all cryptids, it's possible that one day the creature will actually be found and added to the list of confirmed animal species. With sea creatures, that seems even more likely, but for now, this creature remains a mystery. If it hasn't already been found. 
Number 4. The United Kingdom does have some interesting wildlife, including foxes, deer, and even recently reintroduced bison. But when it comes to big cats, the only ones prowling freely are the critically endangered Scottish wildcat. But some believe that there may be many other big cats roaming in the wild across England and Wales. Stories about larger than normal cats living in the wilderness date back hundreds of years. There are many legends of large supernatural animals that haunt one particular area of a country, while many are described as dog-like or unlike anything that had previously been seen, there are a fair number of these supernatural cats said to be waiting for the next victim. But British big cats aren't paranormal, according to believers. For decades, owning exotic pets was very fashionable and a way to show off your wealth. People would adopt the cubs of cats from Africa and the Americas. In particular, black leopards or panthers were very popular. They were even sold at stores like Harrods. In 1979, the Dangerous Wild Animals Act was introduced. The act outlawed owning many animals without a license, including most primates, bears, and large cats. Most people surrendered their cats to zoos, but some decided that a life in captivity wasn't right for their family pet unless it was with them. They released the cats into the wild. According to experts, the cats wouldn't have survived long in the wild. Nope. Most were quickly recovered as they had no ability to look after themselves. Those that did escape capture didn't live long enough to reproduce. There have been the occasional escapes of illegal pets in the decades since the act came into power, but according to officials, those are quickly recaptured. There are no big cats in England and Wales, but hundreds of people have claimed to have seen them over the years. One of the people who had a close encounter with the so-called alien black cat was David Spencer. He didn't believe the rumors so much, but didn't want to be caught off guard if he did come across one of these animals. It was January of 1995 that he saw one for the first time. He was walking his dog early in the morning when he heard the sound of steps behind him. He turned, thinking it would be a horse in a field, only to find a panther bounding towards him. David shouted. See, this is the type of stuff I think about when y'all be like, oh man, go hiking. It'll be fun. It'll be a great experience. This is the type of thing I think about. Now I'm walking down the trail, me and the family, and there's no way of us seeing beyond the trees of what's lurking or what's hunting us or what's trying to protect their children, their cubs or whatever. We can't see that until it's right up on us. And by the time it's on us, it's too late. Then you want to tell me, well, make yourself big. Scream at it. Ah, get out of here, bear or cat or whatever it is. Walk backwards. You tell us all this type of stuff. But the, what you don't tell us is that we, we might not survive this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the cat swerved at the last moment before rushing off down the road. David didn't think that the cat was coming for him. Instead, the cat had been at the end of its orbital night prowl and David had happened to cross its path. The encounter made David a firm believer in what would be called the Rutland Panther. According to the Rutland Panther Watch, there are two types of big cats that exist in the wild in England and Wales. Those are black panthers and cats with brown to sandy colored coats, which are believed to be pumas. The site claims that the ex-pets were able to adapt easily to the British countryside. Even though panthers are native to Africa and Asia, the cold would not be an issue for either type of cat due to their fur. There would also be an abundance of wildlife for the animals to prey on. They typically prefer animals like rodents, rabbits, or small deer, but have been known to attack domestic cats and even dogs when approached. They don't bother attacking humans though, and have instead learned to live alongside them. They're often spotted lounging and watching the person that spots them, rather than lurking and waiting for the right time to pounce. Even livestock aren't often the prey for these animals, even though they've been known to attack sheep from time to time. Panther Watch has received countless calls over the years from people who were certain that they had seen what David called the magnificent creatures. David sadly passed away in 2012, but his work lives on, as do the sightings. In 2019, a couple named Kaylee and Adam Holmes claimed their dog had gotten up close to the Rutland Panther. They had been walking their Labrador Rottweiler cross on a Sunday afternoon. 
the dog ran off into a wooded area and Adam followed not too far behind. He got to the top of a ridge and noticed his dog growling at a large black cat. Adam threw a log towards the cat which made it run back into the woods. The dog had suffered a scratch to the front of its face and was limping though the couple couldn't be sure that it was down to the cat or if the dog had done it to himself. They uh, I want to say it's the cat on that but y'all tell me I'm not too sure how these things strike. If that, if that cat comes at that dog, is he going to let up off of him? Or when, You know what I mean? Once he start, does he stop? Or does he do that to get him away from him real quick? See, I don't know how these things move or how they respond or how they react or how they attack. So I wouldn't know. They contacted the police and became firm believers in the Rutland Panther. In 2021, there was another sighting. Michelle Lee lived beside some farmland about five minutes from a reservoir. It was the perfect spot to go nature watching, and she and her son were on the lookout for bats when they noticed something strange prowling in the distance. Michelle took a video on her phone but had to zoom in close to get a clear image of the creature because it was so far away. She claimed, Lady, you have a kid with you. You pull out your phone? No, I'm grabbing my kid and getting out of there. You pull out your phone, man. I don't understand people. <laughs> if it had been a regular sized cat, she wouldn't have been able to see it at the distance that she was at. It's hard to make out just how big it is in the video. Though when compared to some equipment nearby, it does seem bigger than a regular cat. Michelle isn't the only person to have captured the Rutland Panther or other big cats on camera. For example, a man named Jonathan Terry captured footage of a cat running through the fields behind his house in North Wales. Many experts dismissed the footage, claiming that the images are too blurry or perspective makes the cats look bigger than they actually are. Other evidence includes footprints that have been found near animal attacks, as well as the animal attacks themselves featuring tooth marks from large felines. That cat is big enough to make me never leave the house if I lived over there. Well, seeing that, and I know you may think like, ooh, that's kind of big in size. Maybe he can't maneuver fast or run fast. I doubt it. I doubt it. That's why I said her taking out her phone, taking this picture, that's too close. If he wanted to, be at you that quick. Before you could blink or grab your kid, which you should have did in the first place. He's at you. The best piece of evidence came in May of 2023. It was the second suspected big cat at this farm, and this time a large lamb had been the victim. After searching the perimeters of the property, the farmer found wool and black fur caught on a barbed wire fence. The fur was sent off to be tested and was determined to be a 99% match to a leopard. For believers, this was the best proof possible, but skeptics still believe this could simply be a case of an isolated escape. Even if there isn't a self-sustaining population of big cats in the UK, it's possible that cats are continuing to be introduced into the environment. Even after the Dangerous Animals Act was passed, there are still people who want to keep the unique animals as pets, with cubs available for as little as 100 pounds. Once those become too large to handle, they're often released into the wild, continuing to fuel the urban legend of the alien big cats. Number 3. The Jersey Devil is one of the most well-known creatures from folklore. It's been sighted by hundreds of people since it was allegedly born in the 1700s, with photos taken of the creature as recently as 2017. According to the legend, the Jersey Devil was born in 1735 in the Pine Barrens of what would become New Jersey. The Leeds family was one of the first families to settle in the area, and the descendants of these early settlers still live in the area today. Mother Leeds was known for her many children and a husband who was an unsavory character. They already had 12 children when she discovered she was pregnant once again. She lifted her hands above her head and cursed the child, proclaiming that this one would be the devil. Months later, when the baby was born, it appeared to be a normal, healthy child. That was until it morphed into a horrifying devil creature that looked like a combination of a horse, goat, and a bat. It took the life of its mother, then attacked its siblings, before flying up through the chimney and into the dark and stormy night. Another version of the tale claims that the creature's father was literally the devil, but the outcome of its birth was the same. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, it lurked in the Pine Barrens, taking advantage of anybody who decided to camp out in the forest or wander through alone. 
Its cries could be heard in the forests and the bogs. Many who didn't know the legend described hearing a woman screaming, but when they told local residents, they were informed that they had a close encounter with the Jersey Devil. Its territory gradually grew, and it began terrorizing local towns and cities. For a week in 1909, sightings of the Jersey Devil reached a peak. Between January 16th and 23rd, almost 1,000 people saw the creature in the Delaware Valley. People would see strange footprints that resemble horseshoes or cloven feet walking through fields, over and under fences and even across rooftops. One of the many witnesses of the creature itself was Navy Commander Stephen Decatur, who was testing cannonballs at the Hanover Mills Works. He fired at the creature and managed to hit it, but it carried on flying. It was seen as far away as Camden and Bristol in Pennsylvania, where police officers tried to take the creature down with no success. No people were hurt, but the creature was said to have taken out livestock. One woman even found the devil trying to eat her pet dog, but she hit it with a broom and it flew off. Witnesses described the creature as looking like a flying kangaroo, while others described ostrich-like features. Schools were closed and even some mills had to be temporarily shut down, as workers wouldn't go through the forest to get to the mills. After a week, sightings of the creature stopped, but it stayed in people's memories. There have been more sporadic sightings over the years. In 1960, residents in May's Landing heard the creature rather than saw it. The screams sent people into a panic, and even though the police tried to assure the public that the Jersey Devil wasn't real, people struggled to find a reasonable explanation for the screams. That same year, a wealth and a $250,000 reward makes me seem like it's real. Makes it seem to me. <laughs> The merchant offered a $250,000 reward for the creature. In a wanted poster from the time, the Jersey Devil is described as a kangaroo-like patchwork with the face of a horse, the head of a dog, leathery bat-like wings, horns, small arms, and cloven hooves, and a forked tail. Nobody was able to produce a specimen to claim the reward. Another story took place on Route 9 in Bayville at 10 o'clock at night. The creature ran out in front of traffic, causing three cars to slam on their brakes. The witness described something huge, at least 10 feet tall. It was bigger than any deer he had ever seen and was moving much faster. It darted off into the woods before the witness could even realize what he was looking at. One of the main differences from sighting to sighting of the Jersey Devil is its size. The Route 9 creature was at least 10 feet tall, while other sightings have been described as around 7 feet tall. The first person to have claimed to have photographed the legendary creature saw something much smaller. Dave Black was a security guard from Little Egg Harbor, New Jersey, who spotted the creature while driving home from work. He was driving past a golf course when he spotted what he thought looked like a llama moving in and out of the trees. He stopped his car to get a proper look at the creature. The entire time I was just sitting here saying to myself, like, keep driving, bro. Just keep driving. Keep driving. When will people ever learn to just keep driving? You'll stay alive that way. Now, apparently this dude made it out okay, but for the most part, man, just keep driving. Don't let this don't let something happen to you because you're curious. That never works out in the movies. In and out of the trees. He stopped his car to get a proper look at the creature. It was then that it sprouted wings and flew off. Ooh. Dave caught a photo of the creature on his phone. The photo showed the silhouette of a goat with wings. It was much smaller than the other sightings of the Jersey Devil. Many dismissed Dave's sighting, even though he insisted it wasn't staged or photoshopped. His sighting became even less credible when another person claimed to have seen the same creature a few days later, just nine miles away. This witness recorded a video, which was even more obviously fake. But that hasn't diminished people's belief in the legendary creature. Another sighting with photographs came in 2017. It was the afternoon of June 3, 2017. Michael Robinson and his sons, Stefan and Jaden, had gone out to the Pine Barrens. They had heard about the Jersey Devil from an online documentary and wanted to see what the area where the creature had come from was like. After stopping near a boggy field, they looked out into the countryside and saw nothing. The group then drove a little further down the road to check out a bar. It was on their way back that Michael spotted the creature. 
He saw something that looked like a horse in the field, but it was hard to make out because the car was moving so fast. He pulled off into the same rest area that he had before and looked out. In the middle of the field was the creature. It looked like a horse from behind and was walking away from them, but when it moved its head from side to side, it was clearly not anything that the group had seen before. These jokers dealing with a real life Jeepers Creepers and don't even know it, man. I know that's what a lot of people have been thinking the entire time listening to this, because I have. And they're dealing with that, and they want to keep exploring. No thank you. This creature was only three feet tall and was dark brown or almost black. The creature was between 100 and 150 yards away when Stefan took a series of photos on his phone. The images were much more blurry than the one taken by Dave Black but did seem to more closely resemble the creature described in the 1960 Wanted poster. The truth behind the Jersey Devil, or Leeds Devil, remains a mystery. According to one expert, the devil originated as part of a campaign against a Quaker named Daniel Leeds, who lived in the late 1600s. Leeds was in government and was writing an almanac, but apparently had an interest in the occult or pagan gods. He was disliked by the public and pamphlets were made about him being evil. His son had an even worse reputation. Titan Leeds became enemies with Benjamin Franklin and was a British loyalist. When he passed away, Franklin described him as a devilish ghost. The story of the Leeds family being in league with the devil was later co-opted into a story about an actual devil in the mid-1800s, and the legend was created. But it is possible there's something mysterious hiding in the countryside of New Jersey, keeping the legend alive. Wow. Number 2. The Yeti. That's all I'm gonna think about when I go back home now, and I hear New Jersey Devil. I never associated this particular mystical being with it before. It was always just either towards the, what is that, the sports team? Is that the hockey team? Which team is it, the New Jersey Devils? I think that's hockey, right? I think that's the only time I've ever really referred to or heard of something like that, never knowing it tied to this as well. Is one of the most famous cryptids out there. Yeti. It's also sometimes called the abominable snowman, a mistranslation from the Tibetan language, which would more accurately be translated as a man-sized wild creature. The Yeti closely resembles the North American Bigfoot or Sasquatch, oh. and may even be a cousin of some kind. It's a tall human-like creature standing between seven and eight feet tall with reddish brown fur. It's most commonly found in the Himalayan mountains, though there have been sightings in the most remote regions of Russia. It appears to prefer the colder temperatures, hence its nickname, and hides in forested areas when mountains aren't available to keep it secret. In Tibet, belief in the Yeti dates back to ancient times, with tales of wild people living in the mountains becoming part of local folklore. The Yetis were dangerous and should be stayed away from. Those that don't believe the Yeti is or was an actual creature see the stories of the creature as a cautionary tale for children, warning them to stay away from wild animals. There are plenty of wild animals in the Himalayas that would warrant such tales, including big cats and brown and black bears. When Europeans began exploring the area in the 19th and 20th centuries, it's believed that the bears in the area combined with stories of the Yeti made the cryptid a reality. In recent years, there have been dozens of hair samples sent to laboratories around the world to try to prove that at least one of the many recent sightings could be attributed to something that science has never seen before. Most of those samples came back as belonging to known mammals. Two interesting samples were sent to Bhutan and India that had a 100% match with DNA from the jawbone of an extinct species of polar bear. While not an ape, it was of interest but later analysis showed that the creature was likely just a brown bear. Despite the lack of definitive evidence, it hasn't stopped some from believing that the Yeti is out there. That belief is strong in Russia. Russia has its own ancient tales of wild men living in the hardest to reach places. These creatures sometimes resemble the Yeti, with dark fur covering their entire bodies, while others look more like cavemen. Native people living in Siberia allegedly have stories of these mysterious people dating back hundreds or even thousands of years. That's why I keep saying, man, we got to discover these caves, bro. I keep saying they're like a vital and crucial piece to us finding whether or not it be Sasquatch, Bigfoot, 
New Jersey Devil, whatever it could be, man. A lot of this stuff could be deep into some of these caves in some of these places, man. And we have drones now, so we ain't got to send the people up in there. We send the drones in there, and it can go as deep as we need it to or whatever the range capability would be as far as getting away from that antenna. But I think we should do that, man. I think we'll find a lot of stuff that has been either mystical or or evading us for quite some time now. Sightings are even rarer than those of the Yeti. It's also possible that the sightings of the creature are attributed to Yetis. Russia has taken a great interest in Yetis, leading the way in trying to prove that the creature exists. Really? In 2011, it held a conference where scientists and cryptozoologists came together to discuss the creature. It was claimed that there was undeniable proof that the creature existed, and participants in the conference were shown a cave where a Yeti was believed to have set up a nest for itself. Why would Russia have more interest in this than anybody else? That's my question. See, I hear things like that and I start thinking, why? Why? What do you know or what are you searching for? Or what does that mean if you find it? Why? We need to figure that out. It had twisted trees to create markings for its territory and tracks that supposedly came from the unidentified creature. Skeptics were less certain, claiming that the twisted trees looked man-made and questioning why nobody left cameras in the cave to capture real footage of this elusive creature. The conference also shared testimony from local people, who claimed that the unidentified creature was responsible for taking livestock. One man even claimed to have rescued an abominable snowman from a river, but it ran off as soon as it was on dry land. There have been a few alleged photos and videos of the creature, including one terrifying encounter from 2013. A group of boys discovered a strange set of footprints in an otherwise pristine field of snow near the frozen Ur River. The prints were enormous, with only small gaps between them. Yeah. They were also in a single line, unlike typical animal prints. It was as if the creature had been carefully clearing a path through the snow. The boys followed the prints with one recording on his cell phone. The tracks led to- That's weird. What walks one foot in front of the other like that? That's what I was studying, the tracks to see. Normally you see kind of staggered off to the side because you walk like that. Even if it's a two-legged, you know what I mean? Yeti, Sasquatch or something like that. You Everything you have ever seen, they walk kind of like we walk. So you would see, expect to see like footprints like that. But these look one in front of the other. That's weird. To a wooded area where the boys were able to see a figure. The cameraman got closer, wanting a better look at the creature. At one point, the camera cuts. The boy was recording on a cheap phone, and it's not uncommon for them to switch off in the cold. The recording quickly starts again, and the figure is still partially hidden behind the trees, but is standing watching the newcomers. It then starts to move, and the boy runs off in a panic. At first, the boys didn't want to tell anybody about the sighting, as it seemed too strange to be real. One eventually told his grandparents, who had the footage sent off to be analyzed. Experts have analyzed the video, and while they admit that it isn't very clear, they do believe it is good evidence. At first, they believed the creature had extremely long arms before they realized that the boy hadn't just captured footage of one yeti. The creature also had a baby with it, and the long arms were actually the legs of a child. It's believed that the adult had tried to make a path for its child, which explained the misshapen prints and why they were so close together. Experts also visited the site and found that all the trees had been damaged at a height of 150 to 170 centimeters. Two trees had also been gnawed. The expert recommended the villagers leave out food for the Yetis. Mainstream scientists in Russia still believe the Yeti to be fake, and even the boys' school principal believed the incident was just a stunt, but local officials praised the sighting. Number 1 on the morning of January 8, 2023, the Popocatapetl volcano in Mexico began to grumble again. A local man who was out early that morning took a few photos of the volcano with smoke pouring from its crater. It wasn't until later that he realized he'd captured the latest UFO sighting. Strange activity has surrounded the Popocatapetl and the surrounding area for centuries. In particular, the area is something of a UFO hotspot with strange objects and possibly strange creatures seen flying in and out of the volcano. By the 1570s, when the Spanish began to settle in the area, 
it had already seen countless battles between native Mexican groups. It was only a few generations after the Aztec Empire had taken over the empire. The people they had taken over had also fought over the land. It had seen plenty of violence, with some believing that it captured angry spirits in the area. The Spanish also soon experienced paranormal activity in the area. According to legend, indigenous elders created a thought form that took on the image of the devil. It chased the Spanish up a hill before falling into a well where it was destroyed. The hill was later named after St. Michael. Now Cerro de San Miguel watches as something not demonic but extraterrestrial haunts the area. Popocatapetl is one of the tallest volcanoes in Mexico and the most active. Its latest eruption has lasted since 2004. Other than the occasional warning encouraging residents to wear masks due to smoke, the eruption has had little impact on the people that live in the volcano's shadow. It's become more of a nuisance than anything else, although images of the eruption would sometimes be featured on the news. It was during one of these broadcasts in 2014 that hundreds of people called their news station to report a UFO. On June 9th, a live stream of the eruption was serving as a background to a presenter on a morning news magazine show. As people watched the presenter, they noticed a black object emerge from the volcano. This wasn't one of the superheated rocks that were occasionally thrown from the crater. This object hovered for a while before moving off screen. After receiving many calls about the UFO, the news station checked with a webcam that continuously records the volcano. And sure enough, the strange object had been caught there too. What the object was has never been completely explained. But now, what could this be? What, what can we do? What can we get from this? I guess it's the best way to put it. Now, I've seen a photo before where we've seen like a UFO and it's beaming something down, which looks like it's activating a volcano. Now we're seeing one around one. And my thought is like, okay, is it hiding there? Because we don't often fool around with volcanoes. I mean, we got a few scientists that go up there and check on it, get samples, different things like that, bring it back to the labs. But for the most part, we're not around volcanoes all the time. So do they know that? And know that's a place where they can dive down inside, set up camp, hide out. What, what, what do we know about that? It's interesting. And the reason why I say that, again, like I said, I've already seen one clip or photo showing something like that. And here we are again. So now it's making me question and think about it. By this point, there was already a popular conspiracy theory about the volcano. It was one of the UFO hotspots of the world, and some believers in the extraterrestrial thought the volcano served UFO as a portal to an alien base. The theory goes that we shouldn't be looking into the sky to search for extraterrestrials. They're already here on Earth, living below ground. Popocatapetl is one of the portals to this world, which lies between four and six miles beneath the volcano. How the aliens and UFOs survived the geothermal activity is unclear. Every so often, large unidentified objects will emerge from the crater. They yeah, but that's a place they could be. They could live without us bothering them or worrying about us coming in there and finding them. We ain't going inside no volcano. Show signs of intelligent movement and will hover or change directions in an unnatural manner. One sighting of these strange objects showed one larger object crossing paths with a smaller one. According to a UFO expert, these objects were actually exchanging passengers. The largest of these objects are hundreds of meters across, and most are spheres or disks. It was one of these disks that was caught on camera in January of 2023. Luis Guerra was in his backyard preparing for breakfast when the volcano began erupting again. He took the photos and sent them to his girlfriend, who posted them to her WhatsApp story. It was only when friends pointed out the strange object that they realized what they had encountered. The image went viral online, with nobody able to say for certain what the object was. It was dark in color and appeared to have just come from behind a plume of smoke. Only one photo was posted, so it's impossible to make out what direction the craft was moving in or at what speed, making it even harder to identify. Many have suggested that UFOs spotted around the crater of the active volcano might be helicopters or aircraft. 
True. It's possible for helicopters to fly over volcanoes, even during eruptions. That was going to be my question. How close can they get without destroying them, the, the plane or the helicopter or whatever and going down and crashing? How close can they get? Anybody know? So this could be a possibility. But the January 2023 image doesn't seem to be a helicopter. Spheres and flying saucers aren't the strangest things to come out of Popocatapetl. Some of the mysterious objects emerging from the volcano appear to be humanoid. UFO hunters have caught images that appear to be people flying in the sky. The people are sometimes positioned as if they're standing in midair, while others appear to be sitting. Some seem to have jetpack-like devices, while others don't have any explanation for their flying abilities. Some will move arms or legs, indicating that they're not just a strangely shaped rock, but something with the ability to move parts of itself. The humanoids are always dark in color. According to UFO experts, it's not certain whether these strange humanoids are related to the UFOs that have been spotted, but the chances seem high. It's believed that these are extraterrestrials that don't need ships to be able to survive the journey from the subterranean world to the atmosphere. Some of these creatures have even been spotted on slopes of the volcano. They're able to move quickly without any climbing equipment. Footprints found in the ash indicate that they might have some sort of claw coming from the back of their leg, which would assist in climbing the steep slopes. The creatures are the same color as the ash, between 7 and 8 feet tall and extremely skinny. These strange creatures are one of two paranormal creatures that exist on the mountain. The others are supposedly white with large black eyes. According to one of the people that's seen these strange I don't care how many of them are there. If they have the ability to be around a volcano and withstand all of that heat and stuff like that, I don't want to meet them, bro. They are, I'm already dealing with something that I can't, the, a volcano. And it could withstand that? Ain't nothing we could do about that, y'all. Creatures, they act as custodians of the forest and have been seen here since ancient times. The tall, dark figures are newcomers and come from inside the volcano itself. If Popocatapetl isn't the entrance to an alien base, why has it attracted so many UFOs? The volcano isn't far from Mexico City, but that alone wouldn't warrant it becoming one of the most visited locations in the world for UFOs. Mm -hmm. Some believe that the geology of the volcano itself and magnetism within the rocks attracts the strange objects. It may also be that because this is an active volcano, with a 24-hour webcam aimed at it, it's simply more likely that something strange will be captured on camera here. Thank you guys. Also, they may know something about volcanoes that we don't know. They're using it to harness energy, something. I don't know. But they may know something. And they're, they could be over there gathering all that energy up, storing up to do something to us. And we just walking around. Don't know what's going on. We got to figure this stuff out, man. This this stuff is strange, bro. This is as strange as it gets, man. But y'all get at me in the comment section. Have y'all heard about some of this stuff before? Whether I know you've heard about the Yeti and Sasquatch. What about the New Jersey Devil? You know what I mean? What about UFOs around volcanoes? What do y'all know? What have you been here? Put it in the comment section. All right? And stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.